Uh, friends, hi. Uh, welcome to this discussion on this topic, which is uh, credit value adjustment. Uh, we, we understand that the standards today uh, are all talking about the fair values and, and special focus on the fair value uh, uh, calculations would, would normally expect us to look at the present value of cash flows in, in most of the cases uh, in terms of, for example, financial assets or financial liabilities per se. But, but the very fundamental problem that uh, these uh, calculations have observed is that when we, when we look at, look at the, the present value of the cash flows, we, we tend to ignore the counterparty risk, especially when we are into a, a financial assets mechanism. Okay. So, so if I say, for example, I have an exposure, I've given some payment to somebody, which, would, which is expected to come to me in a year's time, of hundred million dollars and my and my discount rate is five percent, I can I can certainly calculate the present value of that as hundred million divided by one point zero five to the power one. Now this would be something like ninety five point into this calculation maybe on the calculator it would come at 95 point two four million dollars right so per se this becomes a fair value right but 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 in reality there is there is a risk which is referred to as a counter party credit risk okay so what we what we need to do here is that we need to assess what is the what is the value of this particular investment the amount given to the counterparty if this counterparty credit risk is also considered okay and and that's where we say we look at adjusting this amount Right, we need to make an adjustment to this amount, something which is referred to as a CVA or a credit value adjustment. Okay, now how do we calculate that? The, 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 the thought process is fairly simple. We simply assign the probabilities that there could be a default and there is of course there may not be a default, right? Purely, purely a binomial theory here, okay? Now, we are, of course, given here, for example, the numbers are, the exposure as default is $100 million. There's a probability of default at 0.75%. There's a recovery rate at 60%. Of course, we have used this 5% uh, in case for the present value. So, what we're saying is, what if a default happens, right? We are given, of course, the, the probability of default at 0.75%. But what if default does not happen, then the probability would be 1 minus the probability of default, which is 1 minus 0.75%, right? So we need to bring the expectations on that or the expected value looking at these two possibilities through the binomial model, right? So when we say that, we are precisely saying if the counterparty defaults, right, my recovery rate is 60%, right? So whatever is my exposure, I shall receive 60% out of that. Is it okay? Right? But if it does not default, then I shall receive the entire amount. Right? What is the amount that we are talking about, of course, here is 100 million here, right? And basis these probabilities, we are able to take the present value of these expected values to give us something called as the adjusted value after taking into consideration the counterparty credit risk. So if we do this calculation very quickly, we are saying with the calculations together
this is let's do this calculation here on the excel sheet and then we can pick those values and take the present value thereof so my numbers are 0.75 percent multiplied by 60 percent into 100 okay and then we have 1 minus 0.75 percent multiplied by 100 okay now these two would give me a value of 0.45 so we've got these two values which are 0 0.45 okay and this is coming at 99.25 right this gives me a total of of course 99.70 taking the discounted value with a 5% discount rate we come to a number which we have calculated as 94. 95 here okay so what you are observing here is precisely that while the 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 fair value without counterparty risk adjustments was 95.24 the value after taking into consideration those counterparty credit adjustments it comes at 94.95 which means that we need to do a cva the credit value adjustment of 95.24 subject to that which comes at 0 0.29 million dollars right so that is something which is the the concept to start with this is the most simplistic way we can understand the credit value adjustment the objective is fairly straightforward is that when you look at determining the fair values it's important to assess what is the the specific counterparty creditors involved in such values and that has to be adjusted or accommodated for those differences there right that's it in this particular section we we would like to kind of do it a more complicated example looking at some interest rate swaps more in detail where it's not just a single cash uh, or, or or a one-time cash involved but multiple times cash movements happening from both the sides so how do we look at that cva the credit value adjustment is something that we want to talk about in the next set of the discussions thank you very much good day take care bye bye